Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is part two on uh, Freedom for Dummies. And uh, no one knows trust laws. Uh, you don't run into them. Uh, the very rich do, and they do it to hide their ill-begotten earnings. And uh, they become tax-free until they drag them out. And... Uh, There's a whole bunch of people out there who are dummies when it comes to trust law because there's well in excess of a thousand of them written out there uh, that you've never seen. Okay? And I'll give you a good example. Okay? Uh, the law that we saw that was called Freedom of Information Act actually was uh, what took away uh, our right to freedom of information. Uh, uh, and there was a trust law to counterbalance that because they were taking too much. But you never saw it. And when they wrote the White Collar Crime Act, okay, there was a trust law to counterbalance that put in, in effect. And the guy who wrote that is our trustee. Okay? And uh, he has the power to invoke the White Crime Act. Not the White Collar Crime Act, but the White Crime Act. And to my knowledge, he's done that. Uh, what's about to happen is uh, a, uh, to my knowledge, seven-month uh, moratorium. That's the closest word I can think. There's probably better ones. He, I'm sure the trustee can come up with a better word for it. Uh, but shortly, uh, around Thanksgiving Canada time, uh, we'll be in a courtroom uh, filing for a moratorium for all marijuana growers to get out of the trap they're in and uh, move on, form a legitimate co-op, and uh, move on. Okay? It's a legitimate offer. Uh, they have to do it. Uh, okay. Basically, what I'm talking about and writing about is the peer trust, the complaint. Okay? It's a legitimate complaint. Now, what can't be talked about is the pure trust because it's a blind trust. Uh, I can't even whisper about it because, frankly, this trustee simply can't and won't tell me. And I don't ask because I respect the fact that a trustee can see only, only a trustee can see what a trustee writes in a blind trust. And a pure trust is a blind trust. So basically, we're walking into a courtroom where he has one pile of articles here called my peer trust okay and they're open this is an open trust ready to be inspected ready to be worked on ready to be and it's technically a peer trust is looking back okay now at the same court session he's going to have a blind trust okay which is this other package mine's going to be about this thick okay and his is going to be probably about that thick, okay? Now, those are all the acts contained in what he is undertaking as a blind trust. And when he walks into the courtroom with a peer trust and a blind trust, the judge can't even look at what's in that blind trust. Isn't that cool? I I'm telling you, the Attorney General can't look in that file of what's in the blind trust, in that pure trust. They have to accept it. And because it comes attached to a PIER trust, PIER trust, yes, that makes it binding. Okay. Canada is going into a, to my knowledge, seven month moratorium. Because that's what he's asking for and that's what he can demand in order for the marijuana industry to stabilize itself. Okay? 
And that's just the way it is. To my knowledge, a judge simply can't say no. And to the best of our knowledge, the courtroom where we're filing this civilization is in is not uh, going to fight us. They're not going to resist. Uh, this means uh, co-ops are going to open all across Canada. It's not just BC. Are going to open all across Canada to accommodate all these growers who are coming forward. Okay. We foresee 10 archetypal models under the Co-op Act that cities can work with. Okay. And I'll make that a, another video. But th this video, like a, a, a constitutional explanation for what we're doing, is valid. Okay. I need it also. Okay. The reality is, is uh, just like OHIP, which our trustee did in the uh, 1970s. Okay. There were hundreds, thousands and thousands and thousands of nursing homes and daycare centers and hospice places that were technically criminal activities, couldn't be operated. They were run by people who could never filed taxes, never did anything. And the industry had to be cleaned up. Everybody knew it had to be cleaned up. Uh, our trustee did that for OHIP. And because he's got a proven track record of having done this in the past, they simply cannot deny him the, uh, uh, due to his accreditation and credentials, he, they can't deny him uh, a pure trust, especially when it's attached to a pure trust that's blind because they're attached. They, they can't be separated. Okay? Um, five trustees here get to play deep constitutional law in the background while cannabis is for all intents and purposes regulated through the marijuana party of canada through its edas who form who are a federal authority who form uh in each in their own respective provinces co-ops under the co-op act and uh, really if the co if a provincial co-op approves a co-op structure that we don't want, uh, we won't approve them. It's that type. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I I won't allow the bureaucrats to screw up what we're trying to do here. Okay, uh, and it's clear notice to the cities and uh, the provinces who coordinate co-ops is if you hand us a co-op that is uh, regulations that are too loose. Okay, and uh, but we're not going to accept them. We want a functioning working unit. Okay, we are given just like OHIP. In six months, we seven months, we will be showing that we are fully comprehensive, and that's all there is to it. And in order to be comprehensive, uh, our laws and rules and regulations are going to be significantly less. For people to have access to it but when it comes to the growers uh, there's going to be regulations there to clean up your act which is exactly what OHIP had to do with the nursing homes and daycare centers and hospice centers in at that time and it's going to happen again okay in an orderly fashion there will always be black you know uh, black sheep there will always be people who try to get around it. But when people see uh, the nature of our logenics program, which really is fully accredited and, and fully, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, bondable, okay, it doesn't make mistakes like other uh, POS systems. It's designed different. It's got unique features that make its tracking abilities astounding. Okay, it offers grow ops true control uh, over their operation, and that'll be another video. Okay, 
But the reality is, is what we're doing is so constitutionally tight, and it is will result in a sev to my knowledge, about a seven month moratorium, uh, starting somewhere around Easter, because if we don't get papers, uh, we'll file. Okay. Uh, basically, it's if we got papers from them saying, please show your taxes, we're walking into a courtroom as respondent superior. Okay. If we file, we're giving the judge respondent superior because we're filing in his, you know, uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's this distinction. Okay. Now, uh, we're confident to think that we can do this, uh, uh by filing directly to a judge. So even without the paperwork from an RCMP uh, investigation, uh, we're proceeding because uh, uh, we've done it right. We're doing it right. And uh, the only way to do it is to do it right. Okay. And uh, it means a general amnesty for absolutely every grower in the province. Doesn't matter if you haven't paid your taxes. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter your rap sheet. Doesn't matter anything. A pure trust looks back, and a pure trust looks forward. And it's whether you're looking down or up that will make the difference on this. And on this, I'll uh, have a more detailed explanation about what the growers uh, are being offered here. And it, it's really a golden opportunity to. Uh, uh, fix a wrong and heal a society. And on that, thank you very much.